of all the days you have to choose, it has to be today. <laughs> <laughs> that we have to choose on a rainy day to find out how is it like to shoot completely wide open, which means very low F number, F1.4, F1.8 on portraits. Look at me, I'm wet like a... You are okay, you drove here. <laughs> Look at me, I'm, I'm looking too toned now. So quick backstory of this video before we start. I recently read in F-Stopper, an article written by James Madison about how these old school film camera and lenses taking photo, they are charmingly out of focus. And with the new mirrorless camera and the tech shop lenses and the eye focus technology, taking such photos are almost impossible these days. Everything is just too sharp. And also pertaining to this video where I discuss about the type of blurs that you can get in photography, we are gonna explore the first type of blur, camera and lenses blur in photography. And we're gonna explore the methods that photographer went through over the years to get sharp photos from focus lock recompose to moving your focus point and also eye focus. How do they stack up these days with the old cameras and modern cameras put through the test? Let's find out. All right, this is nice. Turn your face to this side a little bit. All right, F1.4 and... At this point, you're probably thinking, like what's wrong with shooting wide open of 1.4 or F1.8? Well, here are the problems that you can face. Number one, it can be too soft focus especially for a portrait, which means that your photo may look dreamy and not sharp like this. Second thing, because it's so intuitive as a professional photographer to put your focus point in the center of your viewfinder and do a focus lock and recompose. But if you are shooting wide open with low F number, you cannot do this. By the time you focus lock and recompose and adjust your camera, you realize that it's not focused to your subject's eyes anymore and it's gonna look blurry like this. So it's gonna make your shoot slower, which means that you have to move your focus point to where the eyes are. And thirdly, I am now wondering whether with such low F number, with different cameras and different lenses, whether you'll be able to use the eye focus that effectively. And finally, we got to find out and see, blurring the background so much in terms of hyperfocal, will you still be able to have a background location being shown? Nice? I mean, you choose a nice background to get a background, but you blur it so much then, you know what? Watch this episode and you understand what we mean by blurry background with hyperfocal. But let's get started. The first thing we're gonna test is how blurry your shots would be if you shoot the classic focus lock recompose way. We have actually made a video here. If you don't understand what focus lock recompose is, you should watch this video. But in summary, what you do is you put your focus point in the center of the viewfinder and then go to your subject's eyes, focus on the eyes and recompose to the composition that you like and take that shot. This is one of the fastest way to focus on your subject's eyes. But with low F number, take a look at this illustration. You are focused on the eye, and by the time you recompose to get a composition that you like, you are not exactly focused on your subject's eyes anymore. So you're gonna end up looking like this. So this is how it looks like with F1.4 focus lock and recompose. This has got to do with this guy, the Pythagoras theorem, where you are actually focused. And by the time you recompose down, you're gonna be back focused. That looks blurred. Yeah, yeah, really blur. But it's kind of cool because nowhere else, it's okay to be blurry in a photo as long as you don't back focus. If I back focus, then your ears would be sharp. So this looks a little bit dreamy front, fo wait, hang on, it's back focus. Look at that, your hair is sharp here. Yeah, but my right. face, my eyes, it's, yeah. it's not really focused. True. So as you can see, this is confirmed not focus on your eyes. Yes. I'm gonna move my camera focus point now, which means that instead of putting it in the center like this, we're gonna shift the focus point to where your eyes is. Okay, those who own mirrorless camera with eye focus, you're probably laughing now. Hang on, we're gonna test that too. Okay, for the sake of learning, I'm gonna shift my focus point to Helen's eyes. Okay, this is really slow and focus, recompose. No, 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 I'm not supposed to focus and recompose. Look at how how it has been ingrained in me the way that I should. So I'm gonna do that again. That means I'm gonna hold my camera the right composition as it is and then start shifting my focus point to Helen's eye and take that chart. 
Verdict. No, it's worse. No. Why? No. Why is it worst? Hang on. <laughs> Why is it worst? <laughs> this is... Alright, let's do that one more time. Alright, that's it. Chin up a little bit. Beautiful. And take that shot. Alright, so let's see. This is a shot that's nearer to you. No, it's not sharp. Mm, Conclusion. Not so this much. girl has blurry eyes. <laughs> So now it's my eye. <laughs> yeah, it's your fault. It rained. You know what I found out? That every time the model wears same coloured shirt with me, it will rain. I know why it freaking rain. Why? You're wearing the same shirt as mine. It will rain. I shit you not. <laughs> okay, the genius of ours, the producer Yi Chong thinks that could be the crosshair sensor messing up. If you look at how cameras are built, you have focus points. But behind the focus points, on the focus sensors are actually sensors like this. You have the vertical sensors and you have the horizontal sensors and you have the also expensive double sensors called the crosshair sensors. And crosshair sensors, because they are expensive, they are not found in every part of the viewfinder like so. So you're gonna have a common distribution like this. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold the camera Put it directly in the center. I'm not going to recompose. I'm going to do one of the most boring shot. I'm going to just focus and not recompose. Look at me directly. Right, chin up a little bit and smile. Good. Now we see whether it is still blurry. Confirm. It's a blurry girl. <laughs> Look at that. It's still blurry. So here's a possibility that the camera is screwed up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change to the live view. Viewers and Haylin, let me share with you something. Your camera has two modes of focusing. Okay. I'm not talking about focusing mode. I'm talking about the technologies. When I hold my camera and look through the viewfinder and focus, that is called face focusing. Not face, this face. And when I go to live view, when I do so, when I do this, it's harder to focus. You notice this? This is called contrast focusing. Let's find out if I do a live view shoot with the DSLR, whether it'll work and after this, if it doesn't work, we're just gonna chuck this <laughs> into the lake together with a blurry model. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's your fault. So I am moving the focus point also slowly to Helen's eye. Focus. This has no recomposing. Aha! Uh -huh. Much better. <laughs> So we now, now I can know. See my eyes. Look at the eyelashes, they are even sharp. So, what does it tell you? That face focusing and contrast focusing behaves differently, which means that I don't even know how to come to a conclusion now. We gotta have. We, the calibration is off. Yes. That's the only thing. Did you know that as the camera ages and you use it so much, abuse it so much, the face detection sensor is. Out. So you need to calibrate. That's why the market sells stuff like this. So that you can frequently... You know what I found out? No matter how you calibrate, it will still never be good. That's partially because of being wide open. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring this down to f2.8 and see whether it's better. Sure. So now we're at f2.8, which is my favorite number. Chin down a little bit. I'm going to move my focus point out of fairness. Focus and shoot. Oops, this is what stupid is. When you increase your F value from 1.4 to 2.8, you're talking about reducing the size of your aperture by two stops, which means that your photo is going to be two stop darker because 1.4 to F2 is one stop and then 2 to 2.8 is another stop, which means that intuitively, I should bring down my shutter speed 1 and 2. See, I don't even count. I just turn the camera. And then when I do so, with the focus point being changed, chin up a little bit. Right, that's nice. Okay, see, okay, it's sharp. Okay, okay. with f2.8. Okay, so that you know why I chose this camera to begin with, because this is one of the oldest camera we have. We are pretty sure it would have back focus or front focus by now, and it hasn't been calibrated for at least two years now. And this camera body is an APS-C. So I'm now using an 85mm at f1.8, the widest I can go with this lens. So I'm just gonna take a shot like so. Oh, it's overexposed because this lens has a bigger opening. Look at this lens compared to this lens. Even though you have the same f number, 
the transmitting value are not the same between these two lenses. You should watch this episode and you learn about aperture and how transmitting value differs from one lens to another. Now back to this. This is the center focus point. Take a shot. Well, I can tell that it's, it's still blurry. Do a focus lock and recompose. Take a shot. Oh, it's confirmed back focus. Look at it. The hairs are sharp at the back here, but the eyes are not. And the last thing we're going to do now, Helen, we're going to move the focus point before we change camera to a new camera. Okay? One, two, and... Okay, so this is moving the focus point to Helen's eye. Yeah, it's confirmed back focus. Look at it. This eye is sharper than this eye. Despite the fact that I focus on the right eye, her left eye is sharper. At this point, it makes sense now to test it with this camera, Helen. This camera is about two weeks old. And I want to find out whether a camera this new has back focus or front focus. So to be fair, I'm going to be using the stock lens that come with the ZFC, which means that I'm going to shoot wide open, which is f2.8 at an ISO of 200. Let's see if I just hold this camera and tap on Halin's eyes. All right, this is the shot and yep, it's sharp. But then again, this is f2.8, right? So that was me moving the focus point. I'm gonna now leave it in the center and I'm gonna go up to Helen's eye, focus and bring it this down and take that shot. Still sharp. But this is f2.8, right? So Helen, we're gonna now get rid of this lens because 2.8 wasn't the problem so we're gonna slap on the 85 millimeter and there you go the 85 millimeter on an f2z converter on the zfc now we're gonna swing this to the lowest f value we can which is f1.8 we're gonna just do two tests one where i shift the focus point and the other one where i leave the focus point in the center and then do a focus lock and recompose and maybe a third one where i use eye focus i don't think i need to test that but hell let's try it anyway okay not too bad, much sharper than the one where I had to focus lock and recompose. And finally, why you buy a mirrorless camera? We're gonna turn this on to your eyes and face focus. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Is it sharper? Yep, it is. So in conclusion, avoid shooting wide open. Try to shoot at least 2.8. And if you shoot super wide open, try to avoid focus lock recompose or even moving your focus point. But still, use eye focus on your new mirrorless camera. And at the same time, upgrade frequently. That way, your camera will always be tag sharp because all cameras tend to have that back focus or front focus and calibration may not help. So viewers, enjoy this series of photos taken with a new Nikon ZFC with an 85mm lens on eye focus. you like the video if you do please head to our website right here because we are having our promo and all these courses that you see right here from e-learnings to premium courses all access and online process program is 50% off but you gotta hurry because this will end soon apart from that Helen, the good yes. news is we just launched a new e-learning course called how to be a successful freelance photographer you're gonna love this because all of us me and her and that guy behind the camera, we all started as freelance photographers. So we are putting all our experiences and logic together to come up with this course that's going to teach you how you can become a successful freelance photographer. And it's not just about shooting photos. Oh, this course will be launched in December. And if you register now, you're going to save 50%. That's the price you're going to get now. She's looking ridiculously tall, right? So either I do it this way or she has to take off her heel. <laughs> Is no it better way. now? <laughs> <laughs> yes way, look at me wearing red shoes. Oh man, it's got to rain. Lens and camera <sighs> Yi Chong is right. Back focus or front focus on your camera is lens and camera. You know, it's like me and my wife, sometimes we fight. <laughs> it is not just the wife's problem. It's equally the husband's problem. Change another husband, maybe they don't fight that much. Yeah. Make sense to you? Right. Smile a little bit more. Oh, this is so effortless. I just point, take a shot, and that's it. 
I don't have to focus crap.